Today we have a great uh, guest speaker. His name is Jacob Jacquet. Uh, he's originally from the United States. He's currently doing business in, in Korea. He's the founder and CEO of Resi, a platform that uh, helps students, helps everyone to make beautiful resumes. And uh, yeah, Jacob, thank you for uh, joining us today and please go ahead. Absolutely, thanks Caesar. Um, hi everyone, nice to meet you guys. Um, I'll give you a little bit of background about myself and then we'll kind of share the story of why I came to Korea and Resi in Korea. And then we'll also walk you guys through the software so you can actually see what we're talking about. Um, so a little bit more about me. Uh, my name is Jacob. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. I was born and raised there. I went to the University of Wisconsin-Madison um, and then I graduated and um, when I was 21, I was applying for jobs like many of you guys are right now. And I had like a 2.2 GPA. So I was a terrible student, uh, but I was getting interviews at like Google, Goldman Sachs, all of these top tech companies uh, because I knew that they were using applicant tracking systems in the hiring process. So if you kind of like understand how companies are looking at you and evaluating your resume, if you're clever enough, you should be able to write a good resume to get interviews. So instead of like going to work in a corporate job like that, I decided to turn that knowledge into Resi. And then six months after starting the company, I decided to move to South Korea. Uh, and that was six, five years ago now. So um, join me as I uh, kind of go through my experience in Korea leading a foreign startup. Um, Okay, so my name is Jacob, as I've said. Um, May 2015, I was in the US and we had an idea to help young people with their resume. Uh, and we called this idea Resi, and we just started selling Microsoft Word documents on a WordPress website. Um, the company and the idea of Resi really took root just because of the name. I think um, it was short, memorable, and cute, and unique enough to position ourselves as like a uh, technology related or focused uh, company rather than like your typical expensive career consultant. So the name had so much early importance uh, in our company's history. So uh, they're really popular, students love them. And then six months later, after, um, you know, we continue to get traction, I decided to move to South Korea. Um, most people don't realize that South Korea is the third largest English market in the world after China and India. Everyone here speaks English, uh, everyone goes to college, and there are so many global companies here. So it's kind of like the perfect secondary market to develop and uh, get funding from the government and the, the support in that way. And then uh, our users are all over the world. So it was really a unique decision. So um, when I first came, I was an English teacher. I was 23. And it's really easy to get a, a teaching visa to come. So Iksan is a small countryside city. And I was there for six months. Um, then I moved to Seoul to get a little bit closer to the startup ecosystem. And I worked as an English teacher for a year. And at this time, you know, I was 23. I was so young and naive and I had so much like work ethic where it was work on resi in the cafe in the morning, go teach English from maybe 10 o'clock in the morning until six o'clock at night and then work in the cafe. So it's just like constantly working on Resi. And uh, over this year, we were accepted into the Seoul Global Startup Center, which was the first government sponsored uh, co-working space for global startups. And that was just at the beginning of Korea's um, like government field push to support global startups. And uh, the Case Startup Grand Challenge is another competition where global startups compete to get uh, a lot of funding, like uh, no strings attached funding. So um, we didn't make it. And that's, uh, so our first success was getting into the Seoul Global Startup Center. Um, our first failure was not getting into the Case Startup Grand Challenge. At this time I was an English teacher and for the company itself, we were still selling like the Microsoft Word documents. So we weren't a technology company but we were pitching the idea as a technology company because in the future, uh, that was where the direction of the company was going. Um, but most importantly, like uh, we didn't give up, we improved the business model 
and we started to get extremely extremely lucky over and over again so um this was friday july 21st this was friday morning i was super hungover from going out on thursday and i got this email uh, and this was the last week of my teaching contract so it was either like my visa was going away but then we got accepted into the case art of grand challenge the next year uh, because one team dropped out so this allowed me to go full-time from english to full-time working on resi uh, and this was a huge accomplishment and it was Friday, so you, you guys can believe we celebrated this uh, quite a bit over the weekend. Um, so then we won the competition, actually. And in the bottom left, it says 32 million Korean won. That's about $30,000. So at this time, we were funded by the awards that we were getting from these programs. Resi was developing a reputation for doing extremely well in these programs. And we started getting accepted into more and more programs uh, as the first global startup to do it too, which is kind of cool. Uh, Dream Plus is a huge corporate accelerator. We were the first global startup to be accepted into that. Um, also the Industrial Bank of Korea, they recruited us into this program. So at this point, we're not even applying, just these uh, corporate accelerators are reaching out to us because they want global startups there's like no one in Korea that really fits what they're looking for. Um, then the Lotte Accelerator, which is one of the most competitive ones. And we also got $50,000 for that too. So at this point, our reputation is really pushing us to succeed in different accelerators, which is important because at this point, we don't really have product market fit. So we're not profitable. It's difficult to work with a VC because I don't speak Korean. And there's always a little bit of uh, hesitation between cultures, which is difficult to get over. So this was pretty important in terms of getting over those hardships. Um, so to talk a little bit more about Resi, very simply, uh, Resi makes resumes. And this is what our software looks like. I'll show you guys a demo, so this isn't too important right now. But it works extremely well. And um, this is kind of like, how we evolved over time. Uh, in 2015, we started as a resume template. Uh, then we built the software about 14 months ago. And over the past 14 months, we've iterated so many times to find product market fit. Um, once we went from a template to a software to a SaaS product, we started to create user data. And that's really interesting from a business perspective um, because it allows us to go in different directions. Um, so the other direction that we went to was B2B software. So this is uh, selling Resi to university career centers, for example. Uh, but that didn't work because I'm a terrible salesman and the time zone difference, and it's just such a, such a complicated process where it's not worth our time. Um, then we tried to take a step into recruitment and I'm not a good recruiter and our team is really small, so that didn't work either. Uh, and then we started thinking about how can we build like a search engine to automate the recruitment and stuff, uh, but that didn't work either. So we went back to the university software, uh, kind of repositioned it, and we, we rebuilt the technical architecture to make it free, and that worked a little bit better. So we went from the resume template, and then we finally kind of figured out um, the other related products based on the resume software, which is data-driven recruiting, um, university software, and then the B2C resume software, which you guys have probably used. Um, over the past 13 months, we've had around 120,000 users use it. And this is organically with no marketing budget. Uh, I know Caesar always encourages his students to use it, so we appreciate that. Uh, but it's cool to see people use it. Uh, we get feedback all the time and we're constantly iterating to build a better software for the user, which is really, really important. Um, there is so much competition in this space. So when we think about how we can stand out, it's all about technology and design. Those are the only two things that are important. So we, we spend a lot of time to make sure those two things are correct. Um, and when we think about like scaling, I think this is the most interesting part of the business for me personally. So I love to like write about this and think about this, um, but essentially make it so good that other people market it for you. You know, if you build like a, an industry leading product, which we are trying to do, 
other people will kind of push it for, for you. And then you guys can share the benefit of this. Um, so AppSumo, uh, they marketed it for us and we had about 25,000 users for that. Um, this is a marketing partnership where a partner writes a ton of different press for really high profile media partners. And then it's a revenue, re re uh, revenue split on that. And then also B2B to C. So if we can convince one organization to adopt the software, we can gain thousands of users. And this is more about the university approach, uh, which is interesting. And I think in 2021 this year, we'll see so much more deployments at, of Resi at universities. Um, and we have it at the Seoul National University in South Korea and also the University of Wisconsin. Again, I'm a terrible salesman, so we don't have a ton of success on this now, but we're looking forward to improving this area of our business quite a bit. Um, and then what's really difficult is finding like a scalable marketing channel. Uh, the past two have been more like relationship based with other people. Uh, but when we're trying to be self-sustaining, we need to find a profitable way to get users. And if we have a free software, it's pretty difficult to find a profitable way to get free users, except SEO. So we really focused on using content uh, just so Google can rank Resi higher and higher. And it's been working pretty well, but it's a really slow process. Um, and of course, we have to execute better than any of our competitors. Um, as I mentioned just a couple of minutes ago, there's so much competition in the space. So um, yeah, design is what it's all about and really focusing on the unique value proposition of Resi, which is building a resume exactly for the hiring systems or the ATS of large companies, because almost all of our competitors focus on building a pretty resume or a modern or visual, and that's the complete wrong way of thinking about it. But eventually people will catch up, and that's why we need to always iterate and listen to our customers and build a better product that way. Um, so this started about four years ago uh, in our So Global Startup Center. Uh, this was our first office. It was really cool um, because I made the step from working in a cafe to having a desk and having an office. And uh, I was young, I was like 23 or 24. So I was just working all the time. Um, and psychologically as a founder, it's such a, uh, uh, a good feeling to go from a cafe into a legitimate office that you can call your own. So this was the first step. Uh, the second office was actually right on the other side of the wall. So it's pretty much the same, but we had this cool window right there, which was another step in the right direction. Um, then with one of the programs, uh, this was our office. And this is in Busan, which is a little coastal city. So right beyond the, uh, the frame of the windows, the ocean and stuff like that. So this was so cool and such a like um, improvement over where we started. So the office is a small thing, but I think a very important thing in how you think and feel about your business at the time. Okay, so um, top suggestions on how to experience success. Uh, find a stage and make people aware of what you're doing. Uh, too often people are hesitant to make other people care. And if people don't care, what you're doing is essentially just for yourself. So when we were starting with Resi, we always had these resume seminars where we would invite people, job seekers, uh, to our co-working space, and I would just lecture them on how to make a resume. Uh, for this seminar, it was 100% female for some reason, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, but it's a cool place to start um, because they get bigger and bigger. So this was the last one that we did right before Corona kind of shut all this down. But we went from like 30 people to 300 people. And what's really cool about this is the network effect. You know, if one person comes, they tell their friends and then it's, it builds from there. And what's really unique about Seoul is the entire market is pretty much based in one city. So it's different than any a lot of other global cities because it's so distributed. So it was really cool to be able to like meet the users and really form intimate relationships with them that way. Um, this is another picture of it. We just went to like a cooler space uh, some more partners. This was with IE Business School, which was kind of cool. Um, so since we're in Korean, I can't actually speak Korean. I'm quite lazy in learning the language, I must admit, uh, but it's really important. So for this, we just hired um, your teammates. You know, you have to build a really good team 
that kind of supplements your own weaknesses. So we had a really strong business aspect of Resi because I couldn't speak Korean. Um, and you have to use your network and you have to develop mentors because what you're trying to do is quite difficult. And there's a lot of people who have been through what you're trying to do and you can learn from their experience. Um, but in Korea, maybe it's unique. Um, there are so many government programs. Um, there's like the accelerators, incubators, co-working spaces, government funding, and you're evaluated by your pitch deck. And the pitch deck is quite similar to your resume, except it's, it's your company's resume, you know? So we've, we were quite lucky on building a good pitch deck that really communicated Resi in a way that made people excited and understand why we're doing this and why it mattered. So um, the pitch deck is quite important too. Uh, the fifth tip is to move quickly. And this is to pivot if you're not going in the right direction, if you're not going closer to product market fit go in a different direction. Otherwise you die. Otherwise you run out of money and that's it. Uh, avoid trends. Um, when I made this presentation, it was really about blockchain and Bitcoin. Uh, so this, this slide is just about like avoid that type of hype. And when I give this presentation, I always like to show this picture, which is so accurate where uh, there's so much hype around the blockchain ICO where it's a beautiful idea but once we actually release the software, it doesn't have any benefit to the actual users. This is 100% a play to like make money off of trends. And I hate that. And don't do that because it's, it's really not like good business practice to do that at all. And then as you start to get bigger, you have to really understand the biggest picture of your industry, um, the macroeconomic trends influencing your industry. And for us, since the global staffing industry is so big, uh, there are so many big companies, so acquisitions are quite popular. And that's kind of the direction that we're going in. Um, and of course, set realistic expectations. In our case, it was almost impossible to raise investment from like an institutional VC. Uh, so we had to do other things like get grants, awards, angel investments, loans, and so on. And uh, of course, being a foreigner in a foreign land makes everything really difficult. So again, just don't give up. So in summary, don't give up, understand what you're doing and build an inspiring team. So uh, that is the end of this quick presentation to kind of explain my background. Uh, questions, no questions, I would assume. So Caesar, is, is it okay if I go into a quick demo of the software? Yes, yes, you can go into the demo and then we'll go over some of the questions that students sent. Okay. So please go ahead. Um, yeah, so Resi, um, resi.io is our website. Uh, we market ourselves as an AI powered resume builder because we use AI extensively to help you understand exactly how to make a perfect resume. Uh, you can get started free here. And then this is the actual resume software itself. Um, it's quite well organized. We built it based on Google Docs where we have your documents on the right side, navigation on the left side, and you also have your cover letters up here. Um, we also have like a sample library. So if you wanna get started with a, a really good solid resume, you can use this as a reference. And then you also have some other options too. Uh, but what's really unique about Resi is our new feature called the AI Writer. And what this does is if you put a job title in, we'll just remove this stuff, um, we can understand. So we, we, we've written a prompt for an AI API to understand how to write resume content based on a job title. So if you type in your role and press AI Writer Ready, then it will automatically write relevant content towards that. And if you like it, that's great. If you don't like it, you can regenerate. And it's, it's so interesting because nothing like this exists. And if you like it, you can apply and you can keep writing. Uh, but what's really cool is if you start typing something. can kind of complete the thought based on best practices. Yeah, so uh, this is based on like a token system. So it's a different way that we can monetize the software too, because other than that, 
um, we have just a, your basic subscription plan. And all of this compiles neatly into your perfect resume, which is right here. And then you can also paste a job description and it will pull up the relevant keywords highlighted in the content. And then the Resi score will grade every aspect of your resume and tell you exactly what to fix. So for example, on that, I forgot to put a bullet point and I forgot to capitalize as we've seen the real-time constant analysis. And if you follow your checks, you should end up with a um, with this quality of resume, which is quite high. So um, that's a really quick demo. I think you guys get the idea. And let's go into any questions if you guys have them. Thank you. That, that was great. Uh, one thing that I want to say is if you're not using a software like Resi, uh, you're letting other people get those jobs, you know, because your resumes are maybe not optimized for applicant tracking systems. Uh, maybe some of your resumes could be more about, you know, the design and the content. But doing, building something like Resi, you know, as a hiring manager myself, I know that, you know, you are ahead of so many other people that are trying to get the same job than you are. When, once there's a job posting, there are hundreds of people applying for the same job. So just by working uh, in a platform like uh, Jacobs, you are already in the top. You're already, you know, there's, there's a lot of competition that you're not even competing with at, this, at that level. So, well, I wanted to congratulate Jacob. You've done a great job. We met back in 2017. Uh, and since then you've gone a long way. So congratulations. Yeah. Software is great. I love it. I, I, I love it. I, I, I always have my students use it um, because like you said, it's, you know, it's easy to use. Uh, it's very user-friendly. The design is great, easy to understand. Uh, and those are some of the key aspects of why it's so great. Um, so let's get into some questions. Uh, first we have here from uh, Ethan. So you kind of talked about why you went to Korea, you were teaching English, uh, and then uh, it's one of the countries where English is more spoken outside the United States and India. Um, and his question uh, was, he says, uh, he would like to know how being in South Korea has benefited uh, your company and your life. Sure. And do you have any regrets about uh, being there? Yeah. I think it has made my life interesting, you know? Um, if I were to stay in the US, I would be like a marketing analyst at some corporation and I would go home at five o'clock and we wouldn't be having this conversation because I would be doing like KPI dashboards. Um, but I think going to South Korea represented like a full commitment to building Resi in the best way possible. And it also put us in an environment where success was most likely um, because where I was, was actually La Crosse, Wisconsin, which is a really small like um, country town on the west coast of Wisconsin, where there's absolutely zero uh, startup activity. Right? There's more cows than startups. So, <laughs> being in Seoul has been a great decision because um, ranked among all developed countries, they're number one in supporting innovation, maybe number two after Germany. But um, the focus here is phenomenal and uh, the ecosystem for support is as good as you're going to get. And I think because South Korea is focused so much in Seoul, and Seoul is pretty much Gangnam, it's so easy to make a big platform for yourself. And uh, for a launching bed, like a, for a consumer uh, SaaS product like Resi was a really fantastic decision. And then I do miss my family a ton, especially like with uh, the past year and a half. So. I think that is the the one regret is not always being with my family, but they understand and I'll be back with them soon. So yeah. that's great. And and being a, an outsider, you're not a foreigner. You talked about maybe there's like a language barrier for you for not knowing Korea. Um, I mean, I'm living in France and I know a lot of French, but I, I feel you. Uh, yeah. Has, you know, being a foreign from the US, has that benefit you in a way? Do you, do you feel like it opens yeah. some doors here and there? People are curious, they want to meet you. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah. 
Um, it just goes back to the story, the interesting story of Resi in Korea. I think um, being an outsider, but building something that is interesting is it just adds a different flavor to the story. And oftentimes if we like submit our pitch deck to investors, they don't get uh, foreign led companies because they just don't exist, you know? So it's definitely like a, a unique value prop of our company. And um, I think the, I was thinking about this the other day, actually, I was talking with my employee because he's French and he doesn't speak Korean either. So uh, we were saying that the, the uh, like expectations of behavior for like a Korean and Korean and Korean business don't apply to us because we don't know and stuff like that. So um, where we get like a free pass from a lot of the hardships of doing business, right. which is quite nice, but it's difficult because not everyone has that global perspective and it's kind of limits us to who we work with and how we work with them. No, and, and, and the companies that you, that you work with and the, and the awards that you receive, I mean, Lotte people, you know, in, in our audience right now have no clue what Lotte is. You know, yeah. and Lotte is one of the biggest companies in Korea, and and they have businesses in other countries as well. Uh, mm -hmm. It's huge. It, it's kind of like a Walmart slash something else, but giant. Yeah, giant it's like dominate. Walmart cousin or something. Yeah, yeah they absolutely dominate. Uh, mm -hmm. So yes, great. So we have another questions here. Some other questions uh, here from Carlos. Um, Let's see, South Korea has a huge market for graduates. The education system is very competitive and uh, many students graduate every year. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you able to uh, market your platform for, for people there? Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, we did the seminars. I think that's one thing that you kind of learned in, in the presentation is um, we just had these like incredible useful seminars and it was really good for b2c on the other hand b2b is a little bit more difficult uh, we partnered with pretty big leading job platforms like job korea which is a market leader um, supporting seoul national university the best university in seoul was really good for our name shit, uh, like our name and also um, as i mentioned it's kind of a small startup ecosystem so people are just aware of what's happening and which startups are doing well. And I think our reputation in these incubators also got a little bit of visibility for us too. Uh, but most of our users are in North America. So we don't actually like focus on marketing in Korea because it's significantly more difficult and our team is small. So we just put our effort where it goes the farthest, which is North America. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good answer, thank you. Um... How did you, you know, you got started a long time ago and, and at the early stage, how did you find the right people for Resi? You know, how did you build the team? This is also right. a question from our students. Um, I think I was the right person in the start, you know, <laughs> like for the first two and a half years, it was just like me grinding away at WordPress and like um, doing marketing hacks and stuff like that. So um, it's difficult to find employees who like buy into the mission of the company. Um, I've hired maybe 15 people in the past six years and I put them on kind of like a spectrum of why they're working is, are they working purely for money? Are they working because they believe in the idea of Resi or are they working just because they're bored and they have nothing to do and stuff like that. And the expectations and contributions of the different employees, it, it, it varies like night and day. So to find the people who are working for Resi because they believe in the mission, those are like the founder or like uh, leadership type people. And um, they come to us because they're aware of what we do and they're interested. And uh, it's a different motivation for applying for us. So. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And, and, when, and from another question that we have, uh, what skills, because at the beginning it was just you, um, did you know how to code? You said, you know, business background. How did you manage to wear diff so many different hats? Yeah, um, so I studied economics and math, but I was a terrible student. So not really like a business student at all, actually. So I started my first company when I was 19 and 
I started my first, like, I started building eBay web pages for my dad when I was 16, where he would like build guitars. I would take pictures, code a Dreamweaver website, put it on eBay, and then he would give me like 20%. So that was like, okay, I can use the internet to make money. And my dad is teaching me like product photography and building websites. So when I was a freshman in college, uh, I had a scholarship and I just bought a bunch of used snowboards because I love to snowboard. And I built an e-commerce website and I took really pr uh, pretty pictures. I branded it well, and then I just sold snowboards, you know? And then that was where I kind of developed my technical skills of web design, branding, and thinking about business in a good way. And then just apply that to Resi and iterated and stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah, and one great, great example. One thing that I always say is, you know, you don't need to go to coding school to be able to build a website. You already have YouTube out there. And like myself, I, I learned how to use WordPress. And mm -hmm. once you learn how to use WordPress and try managing it and customizing it, you can build websites. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's, no there, there, there's, there's no reason to ever go to an institution to learn how to build a startup. You know, like, um, and when I give these speeches, I tell people that all the time. It's just like, take a computer, um, build something and launch it. And I tell my friends too, because they've kind of seen the progress of Resi through the years and going from like an English teacher to a, a startup. And I just tell them like, if you, have an, if you have an idea, launch it and see what happens. Because if you launch, you succeed. You know, it's such a learning experience to go from an idea, which a lot of people have, to something that you bring to the market. And these days, there's so many like no code platforms like WordPress, Webflow, that really removes almost all of the technical uh, barriers yep. to bring into market. So exactly. if you really want to do it, don't listen to me. Like you should have, you, sh you should do it already, you know, and stuff like that. So. Thank you. And, and for a foreigner, say there is a, there is a company in, in Salt Lake city that wants a startup that wants to go to Korea. How is it for a foreigner startup to actually land there? Because I know there's, you know, like every country, there are visa, applications there are some issues here and there how easy for, is it for a foreign company to go there um, i think that would depend on their funding situation if they can finance the uh, expansion then it should be significantly easier uh, for my case i had to go through like different startup programs because i was young and broke uh, so like my, my experience was a little bit different but i do know uh, there's a lot of global business associations within seoul that are active and willing to help global companies expand into Seoul. And there's different visas. And um, I think overall, it's it's quite friendly to doing international business. That's one thing I learned about Korea when my, during my time there is, you know, there are visas and ways to make it happen. If you're willing to put in the work, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, as, as a foreigner, when you're moving from one country to another, there's always the struggle of getting your visas done. Uh, you know, uh, the passport is like the most important thing in your life, never losing and stuff like that. But the, the visas, you know, are key because you want to be legit in the country, you want to do business, and that's the first step. So in that sense, Korea has different pathways um, for this. So great. I don't know if you want to add something else. Uh, before you end, I'm good with that. Good with that. Okay, we're, we're good. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jacob. This has been great. Uh, great experience, great chat. And um, we look forward for uh, doing more collaborations. Absolutely appreciate it. Hope it was useful for everyone and good luck. Okay.